All right, welcome back to the old Turdford 67 channel. Uh, while we've got in the case of the chapters, we're finally starting Torque. And let's kind of get into exactly what Torque is. If you have ever turned a wrench in your life, you are already familiar with Turk. With Turk. With Torque. Which especially means if you've tried to break something loose. Uh, if you've got any sense about you whatsoever, you know that in the event of trying to use a wrench, if you're trying to break something loose, it's the easiest when you grab the farthest away from this point of rotation, from this pivot point. So if you're trying to turn this wrench, you would want to get as far away as you can. So obviously torque, you should be able to think the equation pretty easy then. It's going to be a product of what two things? Torque would be a product of two things. One, the force that this person exerts. I shall pull a thee. It's going to be a product of that force that this person exerts. And it's also going to be a product of just how far is this person's hand from the pivot point. So what I'm going to write is just simply this. FR. So there is your basic equation for torque. It's a force times how far some books will use some books will use this equation some books will write fd it really doesn't matter i just like fr because i think about this as a radius a distance from this pivot point so anyway there's what we're kind of looking at our basic equation now there is only there is kind of like one exception to this fr not every problem is fr because here i'll kind of give you a little bit of an example let's let's get an object here could be a wrench. It don't matter. Thing is, in physics, whether it's someone being bent over, picking up a weight, somebody's foot, pulling a tooth, a fishing rod, a penguin on the fridge, whatever. When it comes to torque problems, we draw everything as a beam. Everything is just drawn out as a beam. And that's what we've got in this problem. It's a beam. And we're going to say on this end, there's something down here. And someone's trying to make this object rotate. So they're attempting to pivot this object about that point, just like this wrench up here. Well, the most effective way to actually turn this would be to exert your force at a 90 degree angle. So what we would like to do is, if we put us a point here, we would like to exert our force at a 90 degree angle, just like that. Now that is our most effective method of rotating this. Well, what about if somebody come over here? Here, how about this one? Let's put a little dot here. Everywhere there's a force, I like to put a dot on the beam. And let's just say that this person exerts their force at an angle relative to the beam. So in this one, we've got some angle theta that we're relative to the beam. Well, here's the thing you got to take into consideration. If somebody exerts a force at an angle like this, you got to think, this, 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 this force has got components. Part of this force is actually going this direction, which is not helping you rotate it at all. This horizontal component is doing nothing. It's actually pulling this object, pulling this wrench, pulling it away from the pivot point. The only part that's doing anything is this, this Y component. And if we know anything about trig, we can qu quickly tell that it's a sine function we would use. So in the event that you have a force that is at an angle, and notice something, the angle is taking between the force and the beam. This is big. If you have a problem that tries to give you an angle to the perpendicular, we don't want it. We want the angle between the force and the beam. So in this case, instead of FR, all we need to write for torque equation here is F sine theta R. And that's the only trick to work in that problem. We just include this sine theta into this equation over here. Well, I think we've got enough of an extent at this point. We can actually skip on and let's actually just go ahead and work a torque problem. So here we've got a problem. Someone's trying to use a force. Uh, and they're trying to use it, I guess, to open a door, and they've got it at an angle of 60 degrees. Now, this textbook's been nice, and it's, up oh, there's a the school bell. It's been nice, and it's given us, like, this little picture here, but let's go ahead and let's, let's draw that picture a little bit bigger here. I like drawing big pictures when I'm doing questions about torque, even if there are a little bit crooked across the page. So I'm going to sit here, and I'm going, wow, that thing's getting crooked over here. So there's my beam over here, 
And it actually said that my pivot point is down here. Let's do the pivot point in some other color. So there's a pivot point down here, a hinge apparently. And later we'll learn how to draw our forces because every hinge should have some form of forces present there. Uh, we won't worry about that now. We'll just go right on out here to the end. And we'll slip on out here. And in this problem it says... If we go back, there's a 300 Newton force at an angle of 60 degrees. So someone will put me a dot there to represent a force. Someone is exerting a force of 300 Newtons. And they're exerting that force at an angle of 60 degrees over there relative to the beam. Notice this. I still want, I don't want the angle like all this big. I don't want 100 if you don't use like a hundred and something degrees in this, just take your angle, extend it from, extend your beam with a dash, and write your angle down over here if it's like this. So I've got a 60 degree angle, and all it wants to know, it tells me that this beam is two meters long. So I'm taking this as a pivot point. I'm going to circle it to identify that's my point of rotation. I'm going to just slip down here, and I'm going to write the number two to represent that I am two meters from my pivot point. And now all I need to do is, if I want to work this problem, well, if I want to find this torque, it's going to be easy. F, instead of R, I'm going to write sine theta. F, sine theta, R, and I've got this one. So I'm going to write 300 times the sine of 60, and all that's going to be times two. Now this older Casio here can be kind of a booger. It's not one of my favorite calculators. But anyway, 300 sine 60 times 2. I'm trying to group it all together so my order of operation don't get messed up. And I got an answer of 520. Now the only other question you might have here is what would be my unit in this problem? Well, F and R, a newton and a meter. So my unit is nothing but a newton meter. And for right now, this is the basics on getting started with torque problems. Only a seven minute video, but it's got you what a torque is. Basically, the next three videos are all nothing but F sine theta R, or F R, F sine theta R. And so all we're going to learn in the next videos is what do you do in problems where there's more than one force acting on the beam. And that's all our next video.